What's up guys, Will Gibbons here, back with another tutorial, and today we're talking about shadow passes in Keyshot. Now it's a great way to extend the shelf life of a rendering by being able to place it on different colored backgrounds or adapt it for other locations like say social media posts or website images even. And by rendering with alpha transparency, you get some of that flexibility. The downside and the challenge comes when you need to manage the shadow underneath the object. So today's tutorial is gonna show you how to create your own custom shadow pass with Keyshot. This will give you a perfect shadow underneath your object without your object on the same layer, and you will be able to maximize the flexibility and the use of your rendering and adapt it for other uses down the road. So if this sounds like something that might be useful to you, grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's dive in. So here you are in Keyshot, you've set up your image, you're ready to hit render, but at the last minute you realize you want the freedom and flexibility to be able to change the background of your image after it's been rendered. Well, what do you do? You could always render out, say, a PNG and include some alpha transparency. Or perhaps you render a Photoshop document and you render out something like a shadow pass and you add that to your Photoshop document. Great. Go ahead and give that a shot. Let's see how those turn out. So here we are in Photoshop with our PNG alpha transparency image. It's looking good. And I'm going to throw a layer of black behind the object just to take a look at those shadows. Huh. Now, unfortunately, I'm seeing a bunch of light colored gray pixels and uh, it doesn't quite look exactly like I expected. And not to mention, it looks as if there's some contamination well, all around the object. So that means, unfortunately, if I were to go ahead and change the color of this background to something more vibrant, like say this blue, it's not actually going to be the blue I want because, of course, the weird contaminated light colored pixel shadow, um, it just doesn't end up working out uh, ideally. Not to mention, if I want to darken the shadow, I can't really do that with this image. All right, here I am in the Photoshop document we just rendered, and it looks pretty much the same as our PNG. If I add that layer of black behind it, unfortunately, we get the same thing going on with the shadow. Now, the difference here is we did render out a Keyshot shadow pass. However, when I turn this on, it's probably not what you had in mind. It's just kind of a tune looking image with some shadows. But again, that ground plane shadow that we really want really isn't there and I can't control it so well with this. So as far as I can tell, this isn't quite the solution I'm looking for. The good news is I have a tutorial here today that's gonna show you how to do the following here. We've got our key rendered out with transparency with nothing around it. We have a shadow pass which exists on its own. We're not getting any sort of clipping. And lastly, I've got a background color and uh, these are blending together really nicely. We don't have those light colored strange pixels around it. And what's great is we can even go ahead and move this key independent of its shadow. And last but not least, we can go ahead at any point and change the uh, brightness of our shadow. We can darken it or lighten it without affecting the key itself. So if this sounds like it's gonna be useful to you, grab a cup of coffee, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in Keyshot. And just to let you know how I've set this up, we have a point light, which is this little red dot here, casting most of the light on the surface of this key. We also have a plane, which is a object that's being reflected. This is what's allowing the brass shiny edges here to pick up some reflected light and look really nice. And then we also have an HDRI set to about half percent. Nothing too crazy. Now in our lighting tab, we are in product mode, and that is important because if we were in basic mode still, we would not have ground illumination on. So let's go and make sure you're in product mode. And there we have our nice shadow on the ground. Now what we're going to do is make sure that we create a new model set for our shadow pass. And I'm going to call this one shadow. And I do not wish to link materials. Make sure this stays unchecked. And I'll sit, uh, hit OK. So within our shadow model set, make sure you double click it to only uh, edit this one. And what we wanna do is 
make sure that in our environment settings, we increase the background color to a value that makes the ground pure white. So because our ground has ground illumination enabled, that allows us to increase the brightness here. And we don't have to go all the way up to a pure white because it's combining the light from my physical light and our background color to create this white backdrop. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now we've got a nice defined shadow. We've got a white background. What we wanna do in order to get our entire shadow though is go into our key and we're gonna double click on it to edit its material properties. And I wanna go ahead and turn it into a multi-material. And from here, I will create a new plastic and I'll change it from plastic to emissive all the way down here. And I then want to turn off multi-material. So I'm basically overriding the more complex material that was on it before. And from here, what I wanna do is make sure that this is visible in shadows. And when I turn visible in shadows on, now I get those shadows back. But emissive is really cool because it allows us to say it is no longer visible to the camera. And we can say it is not visible in reflections as well. And we can take our color, make it black, just to make sure it's not illuminating our scene. And we can take its intensity down to zero just to be extra sure. Great, so at this point, all I wanna do is make sure I render this out as a PNG file, and I do not want to include alpha transparency. And then I'll add this to my render queue. So next, I'll go to my normal key, and I'm going to select it, and I want to make sure that I add it as a render layer. So I can go underneath the properties to render layer and add a new render layer, and I'll call this one key. And then when I go to do my rendering, I will make sure that I render this as a PNG and I have render layers checked, enabled right there. And then I'll add this to my queue as well. So here we have our two images and now I'll process the render queue and next I will open them up in Photoshop and I'll see you in Photoshop. So these three images are what we just rendered out. There's the shadow pass, then there's the key render layer and then there's the composite of the, uh, the full image. So all we really need is the key render layer and the shadow pass. And I think you know how the rest of this is going to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and open these up in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and we have our key that's been all trimmed out with nothing else around it, no uh, shadow or anything like that. That's why I use the render layer. Uh, there's other ways to do it, but to me that, that works just fine. And then we also have our shadow on its own. And because the background around the shadow on its own is indeed pure white, that gives us a lot of freedom when we multiply this over the color we're gonna use. And if you're not sure if this is pure white or if you need to make sure, you can um, control L. You can go ahead and go to your levels, click on the white point and click outside here. And this will make sure that your uh, object or your image is all white outside here. Okay, so now I'm gonna create a new layer, drag it to the very bottom and I'll make it blue and we don't see it yet. There we go, it's blue. Now when we turn on our shadow pass, all we're gonna do is set the blend mode to multiply. And this is going to give us what we want without giving us those bright uh, white color pixels all around here. I, um, and it's going to ignore the white pixels basically completely. Oops, so if we zoom in on this object and I was to grab my eraser and I'm erasing outside of the shadow, you can see there's no white or light colored gray colored pixels. So this will give you more of a pure shadow that you can play with. And you can also, of course, turn off the object and see the shadow behind it, which is not something you get natively in Keyshot. So this is gonna give you more editing capabilities. And last but not least, if you wanna adjust the brightness or darkness of the shadow, go up to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. And then right here, you should be able to adjust the brightness or the contrast of this shadow. And uh, yeah, you can basically adjust it pretty easily. And of course, if you have any sort of image you wanna place behind this, uh, it'll work just fine without creating those weird issues that we had before. There you go, we're done. Hopefully that was pretty straightforward and fairly useful. I know it's not 
as convenient as having the render pass come out in a layered Photoshop document. As much as I would like to be able to do that, it's not quite there yet, but I find this to be a pretty powerful workaround and I think it could get you out of a pinch if you need it to. So if this was a helpful tutorial, please make sure you comment, like, subscribe, enable those notifications so you know when a new tutorial goes up. With that, I hope you had a good one and until next time guys, happy rendering.